from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, December the 26th, 2023. We open, of course, with the war between Israel and terror group Hamas in Gaza, which raged on over the holiday weekend, and a devastating casualty list from the IDF of 23 Israeli troops killed in battle since Friday afternoon until and including today. They are Master Sergeant in Reserve Nadavi Sahar Farhi, Master Sergeant in Reserve Eliyahu Meir Ohana, Sergeant First Class in Reserve Eliasaf Shoshan, Sergeant First Class in Reserve Ohad Ashur, Staff Sergeant Roy Elias, Staff Sergeant David Bogdanovsky, Staff Sergeant Orel Bashan, Staff Sergeant Itamar Shemen, Staff Sergeant Gal Hershko, Captain Oshri Moshe Butzhak, Warrant Officer in Reserve Alexander Spitz, Master Sergeant in Reserve Shai Terman, Staff Sergeant Birhan Okasi, Staff Sergeant Nir Rafael Knanian, Sergeant Rani Tamir, Major in Reserve Arya Rain, Staff Sergeant in Reserve Elisha Yonatan Lober, Master Sergeant in Reserve Nitai Meisels, Staff Sergeant Daniel Nachmani, Sergeant First Class in Reserve Yosef Gitartz, Master Sergeant in Reserve Maor Lavi, Captain Shai Shamriz, and Captain in Reserve Shaul Greenglick. In IDF operations in Gaza this weekend, the IDF said troops located a Hamas weapons compound, including explosive belts adapted for children, it said. Dozens of mortar shells, hundreds of grenades and intelligence documents, this near schools, a mosque and a medical clinic. Troops eliminated Hamas terrorists and took out terror infrastructure, including terror tunnels, and exposed, it said, Hamas's northern headquarters. Dozens of meters deep, the IDF said. The underground headquarters was made up of two levels with an intricate tunnel network used for directing combat and the movement of terrorists. Speaking at a government meeting Sunday morning, which followed a particularly deadly day Saturday for IDF troops, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expressed his deepest condolences to the bereaved families and said the war is exacting a very heavy cost from us. However, we have no choice but to continue to fight. As of today, Netanyahu said our forces have eliminated many thousands of terrorists. We are continuing with full force until the end, until victory, until we achieve all of our goals. The destruction of Hamas, the return of our hostages, and ensuring that Gaza will never again constitute a threat to the state of Israel. The Prime Minister faced some backlash from families of hostages being held by Hamas in Gaza when he addressed the Knesset yesterday, where he reassured that every effort was being made to return the hostages and said we won't stop fighting, but also saying we need time. The Times of Israel reporting there were boos at Netanyahu, and one family member called out, we don't have time with others chanting, now, 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 holding up signs reading, what if it were your father, your daughter, your brother, referring to those being held. A reported proposal by Egypt and Qatar to see the release of more hostages was said to have been rejected by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, who demanded a complete end to the war. Barrages of rockets were fired from Gaza at southern Israel today, including Gaza border communities, the city of Sterot, and the coastal city of Ashkelon. Damage was reported, including a synagogue hit in Stot Negev. No injuries were reported. And on Israel's northern border with Lebanon, fighting continues between Israeli troops and Hezbollah terrorists. Nine Israeli soldiers were injured, one of them seriously today, when they came under fire while trying to evacuate a civilian who had been wounded in an earlier Hezbollah attack on a church. An anti-tank missile directly hit St. Mary's Greek Orthodox Church of Ikrit in northern Israel, injuring the civilian said to be a man in his 80s. And as troops arrived to rescue him, Hezbollah fired again, injuring the IDF troops. 
The IDF called the attack on the church not only a clear violation of UN Security Council Resolution 1701, but also a violation of the freedom of worship. Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant held a discussion at a meeting of the Knesset's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee today where he said we are in a multi-arena war from the beginning. We were attacked, he said, from seven arenas. We have already operated in six of them. Anyone who acts against us, he said, is a target. No one is immune. Those seven arenas he was referring to said to be Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, the West Bank, Iraq, Yemen, and Iran. Local authorities are investigating an explosion that took place today near the Israeli embassy in New Delhi, which caused damage but no injuries. Indian News Network reported that a letter addressed to the Israeli ambassador was found near the scene, but that has not been confirmed. The Times of Israel cited Israel's foreign ministry saying that Israeli security officials were working together with local Indian authorities on the investigation. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, December the 26th. At 7 o'clock, Rabbi Emil Hirsch highlights the Jewish values of humility, gratitude, and the importance of caring for the suffering of others. At 7.30, Daniil Hartman talks about the emotions and tensions surrounding morality and the Israel-Hamas war and offers frameworks for how American Jews can engage during this moment of global Jewish heartbreak. At 9, it's Ken Spiro on the Chaim. At 10, historians Michael Gottlieb and David Sorkin discuss the relevance of German Jewish philosopher Moses Mendelssohn. And coming up next, it's the ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, December the 26th, 2023. I'm Tisha Bader. I'm Yisrael. Chaim.